is doing well and um, make sure in this COVID-19 season and era um, you abide by the government's um, contingency plans and containment strategies. Make sure you wash your hands whenever you go out and come in. Make sure you have your mask and then practice social distancing because COVID is real. So please be careful out there because the lockdown has been released and it's easing every single week. So when you are going out there, make sure you wear your mask and then you wash your hands, your sanitizers and all that practice, your two meter rule, social distancing. And where possible, you can have your test done as well to make sure you are, you are safe. So let's continue with the series where we left off the other time. We were talking about separation anxiety disorder uh, before we left off and we will continue from there. Separation anxiety disorder is a feeling of excessive inappropriate levels of anxiety over being separated from a person or place as we started the other video. So we are going to continue from here. So is some kind of a disorder that occurs when a person is separated from a place or from a person and we're talking about excessive and inappropriate because it wouldn't even make sense to anybody that is watching that you are going through that sort of traumatic phase in your life that why do you have to behave like that when maybe um, you've gone away from this place or this person has gone away and not coming back and you are not normal you are not yourself what are the sort of issues there what are the the trigger factors what brings in that sort of disorder so we are going to be looking at it um, as we go along so suppression anxiety anyway um is in is on pages 107 so we'll be treating pages 107 and then 108 and 109 there's there's a lot on this anxiety disorders and there are different categories and classifications of anxiety disorders we have spoken about OCD obsessive compulsive disorder we've spoken about phobic disorders We've spoken about generalized anxiety disorders. We've spoken about social anxiety disorders. You know, there's a lot. We, 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 we'll be going through all these different classifications, different categories, different types of anxiety disorders. So today we're going to be heading on separation anxiety disorder. Separation anxiety disorder on the page 107 of my book. As, anyway, thanks for those who did purchases, and um, I really appreciate that um, we are supporting each other, support black, you know, industry, support black um, sort of businesses. We are supporting each other, and that is a good thing because everybody, every community supports each other. You know, the Jewish community, they support each other. The Chinese community support each other. The German community support each other. The Spanish, the... Hispanics also support each other. So it's, it's about time that we blacks also support each other. You know, let's grow our love. Let's develop our love so that we become one. If we are united and not separated, you know, we will go far. We will have that respect. We have that economic power. We have that social power. We have that political power. And then, you know, as power flows in, we will be liberated from all these stresses in life. So, separation anxiety is a normal part of development in babies or children. 
and I think as 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 is rightly said, is a normal with babies and children. And it's only when this feeling is excessive or inappropriate that it can be considered a disorder. So when it's inappropriate. When it's inappropriate, then you can call it a disorder because it's excessive and not normal. Anything that exceeds a normal trend or a normal process or a normal behavior, then it goes into the clinical state. Then it means there is there's some kind of abnormality there, which obviously will be termed a disorder. So separation anxiety disorder affects roughly seven percent of adults and four percent of children but the childhood cases tend to be more severe so you can imagine a baby's mother just left for the market and the minder has problems because the baby is going to be crying almost three to four hours before the mother comes back so there's some kind of attachment there so when there's that attachment when they are separated it becomes a problem so the baby will be crying till the mother comes but then there are some children aged maybe five to ten years old they have that attachment and if it's overly if it's excessive and inappropriate to the extent that a 10 year old girl or a 10 year old boy will be crying when the mother leaves home you know to 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 that frequent extent if it tarries if it's persistent if it's intrusive if it's excessive for a, a number of months six months or more then it becomes a, a clinical problem then it needs to be checked out but you know when you check the statistics it's only seven percent of adults and then four percent of children so which means even adults statistics is quite severe because if we take the world population to be seven billion and we take seven percent out of that then it means a whole massive number of people are in this situation a four percent of children is also a lot so you can see that all these disorders are something that especially in africa we don't realize we don't acknowledge it we don't recognize it they will push you aside and say that oh man you we are thinking about good stuff we are not ready to go into your uh, we are not ready to babysit any adult or we, are, we are not ready to babysit any um teenager but maybe they'll be going through that stress that you know they are really sort of down and if they can't even get that help then how is it going to profit them or how is it going to you know help them move forward in terms of their um, growth in every aspect of their lives this is a serious disorder and I think all the disorders all the anxiety disorders that we've mentioned so far if you have got an element of any symptoms of that please get it checked out if it's persistent if it's intrusive if it's excessive if it's inappropriate and it is it's been there for quite a long time so in some cases in some instances even a brief separation can produce panic so you can see how this whole thing can turn into a big deal so you can imagine if somebody has that disorder separation anxiety disorder and he's an adult and has been separated from his partner or her partner for some time and that person suffers from that separation anxiety disorder which is sad and even the abbreviation shows that the person is going to be sad because when the person is not there, when the person is separated from that individual, 
they go through a panic attack, they go through some kind of phobia. They can, you know, that is when everything comes into play. Social anxiety disorder, obsessive compulsive disorder, generalized anxiety disorder, you know, it is intertwined. When somebody has one particular one, sometimes it brings on all the rest of it. So it's a very serious situation that we have to take care of that. And especially where we come from in Africa, we don't really, you know, um, sort of give attention to these little things. And sometimes we think that, oh, it's superstitious or it's superstition or there's nothing wrong or the person is going to be okay and all that and they're not going to support that person. But ideally, the person is really suffering. So it's, it's high time that, you know, we, we, we sort of check this out. And we will be going to another topic um, on this anxiety disorder. And there are so lots of anxiety disorders that we, we have to talk about. So at least the sad one, which is separation anxiety disorder, have been discussed. 